Scott from Unan Sourcing here. Getting back to making some more tea drinking videos, which are the fun ones because I get to drink tea and talk about it, which is basically two of my favorite things. So um, today we're going to do um, a side by side, which I think is really interesting. We're going to drink the two blue snakes from 2013. These are one uh, Unan Sourcing brand teas. We have a brick and we have a cake. They're from the same fermentation batch, um, so they were wet piled together, but the blend of leaves, um, is the grade of leaves is a little bit different. Um, similar, but a little bit different, and, and different enough that I think that it's worth doing a side by side and comparing them, because I, in my mind, they, they taste quite different. Um, here in the cake, we have um, grade one, three, and five leaves. So grade one is um, small, and grade three is a little bit larger, and grade five, uh, grade five even a little bit larger after that. The brick is grade one, three, and five, um, which is half of it by weight, and then the other half is the small chato, and the chato is the um, they're the little tea nuggets that oops that get congealed when the tea is being wet piled. They tend to kind of stick together naturally from the heat and the humidity that's happening when tea is being wet piled. So, um, yeah, so again, half Chato, half um, grade one, three, five, and that's a gen an equal blend of one, three, five, and this is just grade one, three, five. I'm gonna be doing a brewing method that I like to do a lot when I wanna do side by sides which is using this little 60 milliliter gaiwan that we sell um, and having the teas in each and also making sure I keep track of each. Often I like to do this, but I like to do it blind. So um, I'll write the number one or two on the bottom of the gaiwan, I'll put the tea in and then I'll switch them around. And um, so then I don't know which tea is which. I often do this when I'm evaluating teas. Um, so this is really handy because it's a, I use five grams in each of these gaiwans and I just pour it right into the cup here. It's very simple. I don't need a cha, I don't need anything. And I can go through a lot of teas without having to, you know, just, you know, like put my bladder under stress and, and you know, get super caffeinated because I'm drinking much smaller amounts here. So let's let's get started. If, if anybody's interested in this, this style of, you know, um, whether it be blind tasting or not, just using a real small guy one in a cup, I highly recommend it. Saka sides are always fun because um, even when you've done a session, um, you've drank one and then you drink the other, it's really not the same. It doesn't make the same kind of impression compared to when you drink both of the teas at the, like, you know, rapid fire, this one, that one, this one, that one. So, um, I do really recommend, um, evaluating teas like that, especially when you want to compare them. Get the wash going here. I don't want to wash too long. Just a few seconds. Sometimes I drink the wash, sometimes not. Um, there's no real rule about that. Uh, often it's good for the smell. Aroma is, is similar. I'm not noticing a huge difference there. I'm gonna go ahead and dump this and we'll just move on to the next. So. Trusty silver teapot here, so that's nice. Real hot water. For right pour, I really recommend water basically as hot as you can get it. This is the brick Chato 135 plus 135. This is the 135 uh, cake. So, anyways, I haven't caught that. Mm. First impression soft, sweet, a little bit of flour. Mm. Heavier. The cake a little heavier, a little bit. Almost kind of, uh, I don't want to say leathery, but I know some people like to use that word to describe this kind of taste. So I'm going to try. Steeping here. That last one we had stopped, so it wasn't as hot as it could be. So. T 
tea soup, pretty similar for both of these. Um, I don't notice really much different in color. And again, this is one wet pile batch. So, um, and actually I'm still tasting a little bit, a, a little bit of wet pile taste or wool doy, or people call it the funky fermented taste or whatever you want to call it. Um, these have been stored in, in Oregon and uh, now in Texas. So, uh, you know, not particularly wet and not particularly dry either. So the really interesting thing I think to keep in mind with ripe teas is when they're young, especially for the first few years, especially when they're stored in you know, relatively dry conditions, that wet pile taste, um, which some people say tastes kind of fishy or funky, um, is, is around definitely for, for several years. So, you know, this is one of the reasons why we, uh, why we age tea, and especially ripe pour. Raw pour, you can just right off the bat, if you have a strong constitution, you like that strong, astringent, bitter taste, then you can drink, um, then you can drink raw pour, you know, day one. Um, ripe pour, however, um, drinking it when it's very young is definitely an acquired taste, and I've learned how to drink through the kind of wet pile taste, um, because I'm always evaluating and creating new teas, and, uh, and that means buying batches of newly wet piled tea uh, to make ripe pour. So uh, keep in mind, if you get that in a pour, look at the age. And if it's less than five years of age, then don't be too surprised if it has some of that. It will go away, but it takes time. Mm. Very smooth now. It's really coming, coming out. The previous infusion, the one after the wash, was not particularly strong. You were still kind of getting hints of what the tea is. And now that leathery taste is gone. I'm getting more of a dried fruit kind of taste. A little sweetness, a little spiciness, fruity. Um, not getting as much wet pile taste on this one because we've washed it a couple of times or we've infused it a few times. So um, now drinking the brick. And this is what I remember very distinctly um, the last time I drank it, which is the brick has a very distinctive um, kind of ro almost a rose flavor, or very much a rose flavor. And I've also heard this from several of my customers over, uh, especially the last year, year and a half, that there's been a rose um, kind of taste that that happens naturally, and I think it's the chato adds that sweetness and the synergy. Um, there it is again, really on the on the on the white gun with that returning taste. You get this real, almost um, very, almost very similar to rose, and it's the cake really doesn't have that. So the chato adds that element. see when you look at the leaves of the brick you'll see there's kind of lumps in there and they don't uh, you know even after several infusions they're not entirely uh, coming apart so that's the little chato and the chato range in size from like very very small you know up to like even even like this size you know where you could you know throw one you know throw it 50 feet that they're they're, they're quite big those chato aren't particularly useful because you can't fit them in a gaiwan, you can't fit them in a teapot. Um, because they're so tightly compressed and so large, they don't really brew up very well. And if you break them apart, you have a very cloudy, kind of funky brew. So uh, I've never really been that interested in large chato. I'm always interested in small chato. And the tea soup color, not not noticeably different between these two teas. Um, top of the, you know, the gaiwan lid smell. Similar, but I do get this one as being more floral. This is definitely, um, the, the cake is definitely a more beefy tea. Again, very hot. Mm. 
this has a crispness and a dried fruit kind of flavor to it um, and a, a real long lasting sweetness that's very nice in the cake. It's definitely feels like a more robust tea than the Rick. Not dramatically different from the last brew. It's still got a very strong, um, you know, floral flavor. Very sweet. But I think it's so fascinating that this demonstrates is how the tea, ripe tea, uh, wet piled in the same batch together, and then separated into these different leaf grades. You know, uh, Gong Ting being the smallest, Tuji the next. Uh, the, the next largest up, grade one, grade three, grade five, grade seven, grade nine, and then also the chato of various sizes. How blending these different grades together from the exact same source uh, of, of tea, um, wet piled together all in one batch, can produce something uniquely different. Um, I've also would like to say that I find that um, if you were to take, let's say, a grade one tea and drink it all by itself, there's Lucy barking. Um, if you were to take a grade one tea and drink it all by itself, or a grade three tea and drink it all by itself, it wouldn't have the complexity of, that these teas have when they're blended together. So the different leaf sizes, uh, or grades as it were, um, really contribute to the taste. Each different leaf size has its own unique, um, you know, taste. So that's about it. Um, definitely check these out. Um, just now about, what, four years old. So they've got a bit of age on them. They're really pleasant. They're still quite affordable teas. Um, and again, this is uh, the 2013 Yunnan Sourcing Snake Blue Label. Not to be confused with the Snake Red Label, which is a, quite a different tea. And over here we have, on, the, on this side, we have the Brick. And this is again the one grade one, three, and five, and the chato, the little tea nuggets. And this is the more um, kind of floral sweet one. This is one's a little bit more robust. They're both good. Um, so check them out. And thanks for watching.